Right, I'm at the Beacon Rock Trail to hike up that rock, which is apparently called Beacon Rock. It's a uh, 574 feet of elevation gain and about three quarters of a mile. So actually not as steep as I would have thought. Um, so maybe they're just some flatter sections, but it's a remnant of a young volcano that erupted 57,000 years ago. It's like a lava plug. So we'll get a good view, presumably over the Columbia River when we're on top, I guess. I just, I don't know. I'm assuming we get on top. So it's crowded. It's in a state park here. So we're approaching the, the rock face here. It looks like it's just going to switch back and then it looks like there's some railing sections. Maybe there's some narrow drop off. So they want to protect everyone. So you basically just walk through the woods, you know, 100 yards, and now we're all the way right at the rock face here. So looking at the map of this trek, there's like a ton of little switchbacks like this. You know, think uh, Walter's Wiggles going up to Angel's Landing, although I guess they're bigger than that. And I think there's a lot of climbing and bouldering that goes on, so this is access to some of that climbing. So you can see it's going to be paved with railings and uh, there's probably some warning signs that you could fall off I'm guessing but this seems easy enough being that it's a sidewalk so I'll show you quick show you the view up here the river yeah. I'm just wearing my running shoes ah nice view of the Columbia River here and it feels good out in the sun so that's looking back west towards Portland and Vancouver Washington so this trail apparently was constructed in the World War I time frame 1915 to 1918 Henry Biddle and Chaz Johnson. I don't know if that's, there's a period, so maybe that's Charles Johnson. But you can see it's just all these railing walkways. Oh, no, you guys are good. Okay. <laughs> they just chipped, I guess they just chipped into the rock and installed these railings, which I'm sure they've maintained and replaced over the years. But it just, you can see now we're on the little, the little switchbacks where it just goes up. This would be a good little running workout. So a lot of families, a lot of kids. Definitely a cool little hike with, with good views. There's all sorts of rocks you can climb on. Like this, if you want to just go off trail. And uh, I mean, obviously the views from the top will be better, but I just felt like climbing up this rock for now. So, climbers continuing upward. You can see it's just a bunch of little switchbacks and I don't know, we're getting closer to the top, but very gently graded. I wish they were uh, a little steeper or there was just a stairway heading straight up. So we're almost on top. We wrapped around after all those sort of exposed switchbacks we wrapped around the east side of the rock so I'm looking out east here towards the dam I think it's where they have the fish ladder and count all the fish and everything I was there once but uh pretty cool pretty cool view apparently there's a fire three years ago some kids were lighting fireworks and uh started a big fire that burned the trees on top so all these hills on the south side of the river on the Oregon side so yeah, cool, cool views up here. Looking out to the east. I don't know what that mountain is that you see there. There's some mountain that'd be bigger than that called Dog Mountain. That's like about a 3,000 foot gain. I looked it up as I was driving by it yesterday afternoon. But I'm just gonna relax and watch NFL. I just, I almost did this on the way home yesterday, but Adam sort of beat me up. That terrain, I was pretty wiped out. 
so not much going on today just uh this little mini little mini beacon rock but i'll show you when we're on top i don't know if there'll be views or or what we've reached the top apparently 850 feet above sea level but the hike was only i don't know 550 feet or something because we were above the river talking about the water that flows through the Columbia River Gorge and how it was formed. And there's uh, Portland, downtown Portland. Oh, I like, I, did they just, they just superimposed some water over that picture. That's pretty funny. So anyway, he's still see, seeing east, but otherwise not with the trees, not the best views from up here, but on the way down, I'm going to go climb out on a little point, get a little adventurous here. So we're going on a little off-trail adventure here to try to get to, I don't know, some sort of cool lookout point. I should have given my phone to Paul. But it's okay. I guess I could step down there. I wanted to get out. I don't know if there's like a good, there's not really like a good point to get out to. I guess you could traverse. Maybe I can go over and get on top of that thing. <laughs> I don't have my hiking shoes on, so I gotta be a little careful here I'm more concerned that my wallet and my phone are gonna fall out of my pocket like a mini little knife edge here sort of yeah I think here pretty easily <laughs> I want to get on top of this one might be hard to get on top of but that was the idea <laughs> yeah I just don't want to drop my stuff out of my pocket Oh yeah, if I climb around here, I can get up this thing. Yeah. All right. Woo! pretty cool little traverse there so I'm gonna take a picture and then uh, skedaddle back I guess I could even get out to a point there if I wanted to but uh, we're gonna call that rock traverse sort of uh, sort of that's the that's the off-trail adventure for today so I'll check in we're gonna check out the fish hatchery I'll show you the fish and I'll show you a lookout point over the river too I am at the Bonneville Dam at the Fish Ladder. So you get all sorts of salmon, steelhead trout, lamprey sturgeon, shad. Basically you need a way for the fish because they can't, obviously there's a big concrete dam. So you need a way for the fish to be able to continue upstream to, to spawn or whatever they're doing. I guess that's why they're doing it. Um, so anyway, there's like a way for them to get around the dam and they have people that like count, like manually count how many fish come in. 
um, you know, per day or per hour or what have you, um, to get an idea for what the fish population is. And that might, that might determine some of the fishing regulations. I'm not sure on that, but yeah, you can come in here and look at all the windows and you can see all the fish swimming up, bypassing the dam up the Columbia river. It's pretty cool in here. You got all these colorful carpets and paintings and stuff like that. Informational things you can read. Well, here you go. So today, so yesterday, there were 11,000 plus adult Chinook salmon, I guess. Um, no sockeye. And then year to date, you can see there's 4.3 million shad, zero coming through. And here shows you when they come by. So the steelheads come by mostly center around August. Looks like a normal curve. The lamprey are earlier in the summer. The shad are almost all in June, as are the sockeyes, a little bit in July. The coho salmon are mostly in September. So, although there weren't a lot of coho yesterday. And then this is interesting, the Chinook, they're very spread out. That's not a very normal distribution at all. Um, but you can see how many in 2022 and then I guess a, a 10 year average. So all sorts of data if you're into this stuff. The flow facts for the dam, the river temperature, 68 degrees Fahrenheit.